Welcome to The Science of Art. I'm your host, Mott Tuman. We're gonna be talking about archival science in this episode, specifically with paper. So it's gonna be everything that you need to know to learn the differences between acid-free paper, archival paper, pH neutral paper, what all those things mean, and what it means for the quality of your art. So we're gonna be starting out with talking about the difference between archival and acid-free. Lots of times papers will, you know, they'll have labels on them that will say either acid-free or archival. Those are two different things. A lot of people equate them as the same, but they have slightly different definitions. Typically, something that is acid-free will have an alkaline pH, which would be a pH that is higher than seven. Whereas archival will be acid-free, but it also will have a couple other qualities that will make it archival. These qualities can kind of vary between different brands, but typically, particularly for paper, it will be something that is 100% pure cotton fiber or 100% pure cellulose fiber or a hybrid between the two. So what are the differences between cotton fibers and cellulose fibers? Cotton fibers, like this New York Central watercolor paper, which is 100% cotton, are naturally acid-free. They don't have any acid that's naturally occurring with them. If they don't come into contact with anything else that is acidic, they won't have any acid properties that are going to break down your paper over time. Cellulose, on the other hand, is created from wood. And one thing that is specific about wood is that it has something called lignin in it. This is different from linen, two different words. Lignin is something that is naturally acidic. It occurs in wood. And when we have paper created from wood, like cellulose paper, we have to take that lig lignin oh my gosh, out of the process. So the manufacturing process is kind of kept under lock and key. Some people do it in different ways. One thing that people can add to either your cotton paper or cellulose paper to help keep the pH from fluctuating is something called a buffer. Now a buffer is typically an alk alkaline substance, a coating of some sort that they're gonna put on the outside of your paper to keep the pH from fluctuating. Lots of times this will be a calcium carbonate and I know that's a big word that I just threw out there, but a lot of you guys are gonna be super familiar with it as it's one of the main ingredients in baking soda. So baking sodas tend to have really alkaline pHs, which is why lots of kids will use it in like volcano experiments and things like that. So that buffer can be applied to a paper that is acidic and it can then be labeled as acid-free, even though that paper itself doesn't, like start it out as having a high acidity. Sometimes they will do this with cellulose papers if they do not remove the lignin from it. In that case, that paper can be labeled as acid-free, but it's not really the most archival. It's gonna essentially have that acid that is inherent within the paper fighting with your buffer, and it's less likely to last as long than like your 100% pure cotton paper that doesn't have any kind of acidity with it, even if it does not have its own buffer. That's why lots of times if you buy any kind of archival materials, sometimes they will be labeled as unbuffered. That's just telling you that it doesn't have that coating on it and it is inherently acid free. I'm talking a lot about what acidity is, what alkaline is. So for some of you that are unfamiliar with the pH scale, it is essentially a range between acidic and alkaline. Alkaline is the opposite of acidic. It is also known as basic, but it's not basic, it's alkaline. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. In the middle of our scale, a pH neutral number is seven. So pH seven is gonna be your pH neutral thing. It is not considered acid free. Generally anything above a pH of seven is gonna be in your acid free range or closer to an archival range. Anything below that pH of seven is gonna be acidic. So like a pH of one is gonna be highly acidic. So since pH is on this scale, the term acid free is a little bit of a simplification. Uh, even like some of your higher alkaline, really, really basic pHs are gonna have a little bit of acid in them. Basically everything has a little bit of acid in it. It's really hard to get rid of that. So even though something is stated as acid-free, just keep in mind that that's kind of a simplification to let you know that it is a high enough pH where the acidity in the paper is not gonna affect the archivability over a long period of time. That's essentially what it means. So for this experiment, I have already torn up about a gram of our New York Central watercolor paper. 
We're just gonna rest it in there. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some distilled water. So distilled water is important for this because essentially what distilled water is, is like a pure form of water. It doesn't have any additives in it. And the amount of distilled water that we use is not super important. It's just gonna change how long we have to sit and wait for this. So I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit that is about a hundred milliliters and put that off. Ugh. Then all we gotta do is wait. The fibers of the paper will start to deteriorate in the water. They'll get all moistened in and the pH of the paper is gonna kind of disperse into the rest of this water. So we'll be able to use our pH indicators to see what the pH of our New York Central paper is in about an hour. One hour later. This is our experiment after one hour of the paper sitting in this water. So remember that distilled water has a pH slightly below seven. It's gonna be a little bit on the acidic side. So it is gonna affect our outcome just a little bit, but our results should still appear on the alkaline side of this diagram that we have here, if it is truly acid-free and archival as it should be. So I'm gonna take out a little test strip from this. We're just gonna pull it down and sit it in this water here and give it a second. Since it is in this distilled water, I just wanna let it sit in a second so it can really absorb the pH. We're gonna take it out here. We can bring this over. We can see that our pH is just about around eight, a little bit close to pH neutral, just because of the slight acidity from our distilled water. Speaking of the pH scale, I'm gonna show you guys really quickly what a high amount of acidity can do to your paper. We're gonna do that by taking a little bit of lemon juice, dropping it on our paper, and then leaving it out in the really hot sun here in North Carolina, ideally a place where you should never leave your finish art, and we're gonna see what happens to the paper. Okay, so a lot of you guys might have done this yourselves when you're a little kid. If you wanna make your own aged paper, what you're essentially doing is you're adding your own acid into your paper that's gonna degrade it at a faster rate. We've got lemon juice here, and I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of this on, because as everyone knows, this is highly acidic. So I'm gonna use a little pipette here, and I'm just gonna do some spots of it so we can kind of see the difference. This was always really fun to do as a kid, but um, I have to remember now that that paper is obviously gonna fall apart very quickly if you paint like a really pretty like aged map or something like that using this. It's not gonna last very long. Okay, now we can put this out in the sun. So now I'm gonna show you guys what happened after we left our paper out in the sun with that lemon juice on it. You can see here, I did a little bit of drips. Actually, I think this might be, I think I dripped it like that last time, but you can see this isn't just staining from our lemon juice. It's a little bit sticky because of the, where the lemon juice kind of built up, but this kind of brownish residue that was left behind was actually the paper breaking down and aging at a faster rate because of the high acidity in that lemon juice. With all of that information that I just gave you guys, we're gonna look at some of the things that you can do to help preserve your art for even longer, even if you're using a fully 100% cotton archivable paper. Lots of things that you can use. We have a lot of products. I've hidden a ton under here, the desk. Okay. <laughs> this is an archival clamshell storage box. Is gonna keep anything that you put in it free from any kind of acids. This is really helpful if you have wooden drawers. Any kind of wooden drawers that you're using are gonna have some kind of lignin in them. That lignin can transfer into your paper and like bring the acidity back into your archival paper. So a box like this that is gonna keep that acidity out is amazing if you wanna preserve your art. Other things you can do is acid-free tissue paper. You can interleave it between your sheets of art so they're not coming into contact with each other. Like if you have a lot of different papers that have different levels of acidity. There's even these crystal seal cases that are archival that you can put your artwork in that'll keep them protected from any kind of a city they'll come in contact to. And lastly, you can even use gloves. Now, a word of advice about white cotton gloves. I see a lot of people using them. Lots of people will see conservatives using them and think this is the perfect thing for my art. A word of caution is that you don't really need these. <laughs> um, 
If you have really sweaty hands, if you have hyperhidrosis, you're sweating a lot, then that's when you can wear gloves because that can like leave fingerprints on your art over time. But all you really have to do is wash your hands before you handle your art and you don't really have to worry about fingerprints. So you don't really have to worry about these. It'll be okay. Finally, you can also use UV protective glass. Keep your art out of the sun and you'll be good to go and everything you'll create was gonna last for at least 70 to 100 years. Now, as I was saying earlier, pH is a scale, archivability is also a scale. Like I said, there's differing amounts of acidity in any kind of paper you have, and anything that you create is going to fade over time. So really, when you're thinking about art materials that you wanna use, what papers you wanna use, if you wanna make something last for a really long time, that's when you wanna try to invest in some of these great archival products that you can get. But really, everything's going to fade over time unless your art is being really, really cared for by a conservator. It's just, it's just one of the things we have to deal with as people, you know, our bodies get old and we fade over time and so does our artwork, and that's okay. But just like if we take good care of our bodies, it will last for a long time. If you take good care of your artwork, if you keep it out of the sun, if you wear sunscreen, it's going to be able to last and future generations will be able to see it. If you liked this video, like and subscribe, leave any comments below if you have any scientific questions or things you would like to see in future shows. And thank you for watching The Science of Art. Our bodies can fade over time, but with proper care, we can make them last longer. Same with your art. It's a little bit more of a positive spin instead of we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit of a pessimist. <laughs> be able to be passed down into future generations Sorry. I was gonna be pessimistic again. I was like, I gotta stop. I was gonna say like, you'll be able to meet your grandchildren. I was like, gosh, quit it.